Yo, what's popping? I'm here to do my summer showdown bracket, uh, starting with the East and going over to the West, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, let me know where you think I'm wrong, what your bracket's going to be, who you think is going to win, things like that, in the comment section down below, as always. Um, that's going to be good. So, starting off with the Shanghai Dragons, we're going to a charge. Um, the Dragons are just too good, right? Like, how can you actually expect the charge to win this? Do they actually have an advantage in any slot? Probably not. Who are you is just better than Choice A1? If Choice A1 can probably compete with him, that's that being a little optimistic. I still think Who are you has the edge, and Lips should just dominate Jimmy to be straight. But uh, I don't know how Charge even take a map here unless you believe in Choice A1 that much. No, I don't. I don't. I'm a Choice A1 enjoyer, a believer even, but I'm not seeing a 3 0 or anything other than a 3 0 for the Dragons. Now we have the Philadelphia Fusion against the Soul Dynasty. Okay, do you believe that Zestin MN3 is good enough to carry Fusion through the Dynasty, where they get diffed in every other department? Uh, I don't, to be honest. I think this is probably a still Dynasty win. Now, did Philly even get a map? I don't think so. I think if the DPS pop off enough to get a map, they have the potential to maybe go the distance. Hard to say, but I don't I don't think they're even going to get a map. I think that we'll probably have a decent performance, but Soul will just be a little bit better consistently in the back line of the core of this roster than the Philadelphia Fusion and just win. So I'm gonna go back to back 3-0s. Maybe this could be a 3-1, but I'm not I'm not gonna go with that. I think I like the 3-0 better. And now we have oh it's just that one. Yeah, it's another charge against fusion. So I like the charge backline better. I think the Krong and Fury are probably about even. And I like the Philly DPS better. So the, the question here is do you believe that the backline gap is big enough to put the charge on top or not? I personally do. I believe that. I think it will be a kind of a banger because if MN3 and Zest perform, then the backline must, they will be better, but they can only mitigate how much they do by so much. So it really will count on Jimmy stepping up and Choice Awan being able to step up and dominate a weaker fusion core. So I'm going to go with Charge for this, a 3-2. And that's mostly the reason. It's just because the backline, I believe Choice Awan should be able to keep up with Zest or, or exceed him. I, I'm, again, a huge Choice Awan believer and... Hopefully, Jimmy is solid enough to keep up with MN3. And yeah, I don't think, I'm not expecting Jimmy to be on the same level, but I am expecting him to have a better like output consistently because MN3 is more of an explosive DPS. Sometimes he disappears, sometimes he comes alive. So I'm going to go with a uh, 32 for the charge. Now, Shanghai. Oh, wait. Yeah, Shanghai and Seoul. Ooh, that's a rough one because we, we've seen how this happens. And honestly, I struggle to place Seoul above them still here. Like, I think Shanghai just do everything a little bit better. I think they set the tempo much better, actually. I think that Izayaki is a bit better than Profit at what you need the Brigida to do in this meta against a team of the caliber of the Shanghai Dragons. So, I think the, I think the Darker Queens are about even. I like Shanghai a bit more. We'll see if Fitz is able to compete with Lip, because right now Lip is pretty solidly better than Fitz. I think that's not, not a hot take, and I think Who Are You is also better than Stalker. So factoring those things in, I give Shanghai the edge overall. Maybe the only edge I get to Soul is I think Smurf might be a little better than Void. It's hard to tell. I, I, they're actually like pretty dead even to me. And I do think Vindame is better than Lee Gan in this meta. So there's that. But Vindame had some odd mistakes still like it's in that last series, so who knows really. Um, but I'm going to go with a 3... I'm going to go with another 3-0. I don't see... No, maybe a 3-1. I, I say Soul, Soul might be able to rally together and take a map. Because they were, they were pretty close, especially on Li Zhang. So Soul can probably take a control map, I would guess. But uh, I like the Dragons more overall. So I'll give them a 3-1 for the Dragons in the Winner's Finals. Then we go to Charge versus Dynasty. Okay, Charge all the way. And now Charge Sweep. Right, boys? Where's the, where's the error? Um, I just can't do that, though. As much as I am a charge believer, I do think this match will actually be closer than people think. I'm actually going to go for a 3-2 for the Dynasty. I still, I do think Choice A1 is able to, to take that next step. And I think here he can really prove himself to be like above and beyond. Like Consider him for an S-tier player in this league. I think he has been, but he needs some real proof here that he can compete against the best of the best. This is where it's going to happen. Uh... I don't know. That that's that's my biggest thing. Is I choice say one, it's good enough to get them some math. The backline solid that the huge that, that obviously the big issue here is Krong is going to get dipped by Smurf if this matchup happens, right? That's just how it's gonna be. But I don't think it's a gap that's uh unescapable, uh, unable to break through that gap. 
because it's not like Smurf is like a super like top tier Junker. Queen. He's just been good enough. Like the Junker Queens in APAC, I find have been, you know, pretty pretty even for the most part. There are some differences, specifically with Prong and Fury in this tournament, but. He might be like a step below them, but he's not like five steps below. Him. He's not at the bottom of the steps. And Smurf's not at the top. They're both somewhere in the middle. Uh, I'm gonna go with the charge three two. I I don't know. I think that choice in one and Jimmy will be able to um, be good enough and uh, not win the series, but you know take some maps. Sure, uh, I like a three two for them. But then we get back to the finals, back to that the main event of the Shanghai Dragons against the Seoul Dynasty. This is for all the marbles, and I'm going to go with Shanghai again. Because here's the thing. I think it's really good for both of the top teams in the region to win a regional tournament each. That's that's very good for the storylines. I think that if Shanghai can't win what they have, when they have Who Are You and Lit performing as they are, they're never going to win uh, anything significant this season, which I guess is the last thing I'll be in the playoffs to actually do that to. But uh, they're still fighting for, I guess, top of APAC, which is worth fighting for, I guess. Um... Is it a 4 Oh, I think it might be. I don't know. I just don't think... I think... Who are you was so good, man. And just the tempo that Shanghai have been setting, I don't know if Seoul can match that. Like, I don't think Seoul are really playing slow, right? They're not playing slow, but it's just Shanghai are playing so much faster. It's... It's it's, an, it's a real problem for the Dynasty. And I don't know if it's something that's just, oh, we just go faster. It's not. It's not that simple. They have more things to worry about. They have, like, just as a team, the positioning has to be there. Fits to be able to follow up whenever soccer goes in. Stalker's already not as, as aggressive as Who Are You. Who Are You will be the first real engagement for Shanghai sometimes. Stalker often isn't actually the first engagement point. Uh, normally, there's some other points going on, whether it be Smurf doing something, if it's Profit trying to hit a whip shot off of a, off of a Fitz shot or something like that. Uh, with Shanghai, you will literally just see who are you say, okay, they're right there. I'm gone. I'm into the back line. Come with me or we will lose. And I think that really helped Shanghai right now. I'm actually just going to 4 I know that's not what you'd love to see. You want to see nice, close, tight series, especially in the finals. But I think Shanghai are just peak in this meta for APAC. I'm just going to go for a 4 Now, Seoul could bounce back. They could figure out how to go as fast as Shanghai. They could figure out how to exploit who are you going in. As much as he is, things like that, but I'm not I'm not as confident. So going over to the west, I will be live at this event. So if any of you happen to see me there, I don't know if any of you watch me who are going, but hit me up. But I should try I'm gonna try to get to all the matches. I'm not sure if I'll be able to, but I should I'm gonna I'm gonna make an attempt. Anyway, starting off with the Washington Justice against the Dallas Fuel. Dallas are too good. So Washington, they kind of show that Bit of a one-trick pony with their aggression. They, that's all they know, and it's not even well-placed at times. It can be pretty easily exploited. So I think Dallas will do a pretty good job of absorbing that aggression and just kind of winning with it. I don't really see Justice popping off here. Uh, we saw that Decay wasn't able to pop off on his own. Assassin really struggled. Uh, 3-0 looks pretty pretty imminent to me, and I, I was a Justice enjoyer, but it just it's hard to, uh, to really say that they could actually win this matchup i think right like i don't know like they couldn't they couldn't look competitive against houston how can they expect to look competitive against dallas so going up to the toronto defy against london spitfire so this was a 3-1 for london just last week a few days ago even not even a week later they match up again what's going to change what's going to change is the map picks i've been saying it i think toronto will lose against the best teams on sojourn it's not because Hisu's not as good as Sojourn, it's just as a team, they're better when playing around the Ash. And this is this is a big difference. I think that London will try to get them onto Circuit Royale and New Queen Street again, and they might get those wishes, but it comes down to can Toronto win two other control matches, and you can play Ash on all the controls. Uh, maybe some sub maps you don't, like uh, Oasis Gardens. I don't think they do, but then you but you still can play it everywhere else, basically. Um, I like Toronto here for a 3-2. I don't think they're going to give London that momentum. And another thing about Toronto is they said whenever they had like a fan event, that whenever they had the crowd with them, they would they really rallied around the crowd and they used that to strengthen their game. That's what they said, at least. Not sure if it's actually true, but that's what they claim. Um, that's not a great like source, uh, like a, a data pool, uh, I guess, for determining if they can actually handle the pressure of a crowd. I'm going to choose to believe that the crowd will actually help them 
and propel them to greater heights. And you know what? Why not? I think F32 looks pretty good here. Uh, London is a good team, but I think the fine are a little bit better. And on the Ash, again, London really, I don't think they had it sorted out. I think Toronto fumbled the bag. It wasn't London figuring out how to beat the Ash, and they never got it back. Toronto never were, was able to pick up the bag that dropped on the floor. It was dropped off a cliff. Right? So I'm going to go with a 3-2 for Defiant. Now, Vancouver Titans against the San Francisco Shock. Can you argue Vancouver wins this at all? Probably not. Unless you're leaving an Aspire that much to Kilo, which you probably will. But the difference between Proper and King is astronomical. And every other position, I'd give it to the Shock. Especially, um, especially like the core of the team, it, I just think Shock look much better. Yeah, Vancouver will have a good job of disengaging and engaging and knowing when to play off of the Spire and things like that. But we showed that they maybe were losing a little bit of faith because they were playing the Ashmore, which is not like not the game plan I think that Vancouver needs. I think they need Aspire to be there to hit those pop-off shots. I, I'm a big advocate for the Ash on some teams, so Vancouver is not one of those teams. They need they need Aspire to, to be the main deciding factor in a lot of these fights, and he's has a harder time doing it on the Ash. And it, it kind of it makes me feel not quite right about this team that they tried to play it as much as they did against Boston. Now, Florida Mayhem against Houston Outlaws. Florida, of course, not being able to actually have Sermage at land. He might be able to play from home, but I'm not sure. So regardless, I think it's a 3-0 for Houston. Because, I don't know, man. I don't really rate the flex support that much for Florida. Like, if Sermage plays, I guess I can give them a map. I think I think a map's pretty, pretty reasonable. But... I don't know if I want to give them much more than that. I like like can Houston really not prep for the flex sport? They're going to have a have an idea of what to do against it going in. They're going to look at this matchup and figure out how to deal with the flex sport pretty easily. I think Houston's good enough to get by it. I think Pelican's good enough to, to really eviscerate that back line. If you have a really good Genji, it makes the double flex support very hard to play because how aggressive they can be into it. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna go with a I'm just gonna go with a 3 0. I don't I don't think I don't think Florida has what it takes. I just don't. Um, anyway, next up, we have the Dallas Fuel against the Toronto Defiant. Now, Dallas is also a team that benefits from the Ash, and they do play it. They do they do enjoy it. I'm not sure if Defiant have this one right now. Like, I'll give them a map, I think, because they have had good showings against Dallas in the past, but... I think I think three one is very reasonable. I think Dallas has maybe gotten a bit better in the fight. It's hard to tell, but I think that Dallas have gotten better in the fight from their last meeting. I still think the fight's good enough for one, but more than that, at least for round two, it's not the question for me. I don't know. Dallas are too strong. Uh, the fight need a bit more, a bit more seasoning with the crowd. A bit more uh, need to be put back in the oven a little bit. You know. Uh, but going on to the other side of winners, we have the Shock against the Ella. So this results even either in the rematch of Dallas Shock or the Battle of Texas, depending on who wins this. If if not back, it goes this way. And of course it won't, right? I probably got half of these wrong already, right? But um, I believe in Shock quite a bit. So the thing about Houston, I do think Houston are going to make a deep run. I said that about them last time. It wasn't actually... Not, not actually what I was feeling last time about those feelings. Houston was the first draw in season five. I I still feel good about Houston, but I don't feel better than Shock good. I think Mara will be able to diff Kilo, but everything else with the Shock, I do like their backline more right now. I think I do like Peluge a little bit more than Dante. Just a little. And proper and proper Pelicans can be decently close. But to me, the Shock core is better. I think Pelican and Proper, or no, Pelican versus Proper, which is always a, a fun thing to say and to see. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not sure if I'm all in on Houston right now. I'm just not sure. I think it, it could be close. Maybe I am in all of Houston. Maybe I am, actually. The more I think about it, Merit, Pelican, it's just a matter of will they choke again in the tournament? Because they've not really been able to play at their full level throughout an entire tournament. Throughout even three rounds of a tournament, we've seen Pelican kind of crumble at times. Can they really can can he bounce back in this tournament? I'm thinking he can't. I'm thinking he can't. It happened twice in a row, third time. Maybe he bounces back on top, try number three, but 
not against shock right here right now unfortunately i'm gonna go with a 3-1 i think i think Houston might be able to pull one out but shock should have a much better core overall should be a better team and especially if pelican doesn't perform as i kind of think he might not it's gonna be shock uh, going down to the elimination rounds, the first teams to get eliminated, Washington and Spitfire. Again, I think Spitfire are going to be able to take advantage of Justice, uh, of their aggression. They're kind of a team that they're doing pretty good at changing things on the fly. Not, like, just phenomenal, but they're good enough, I think. Maybe not, actually. The, they're either going to have this or they're not going to have it. I think it's pretty solid, right? Because we saw they couldn't adjust against Florida in the last tournament. They didn't really adjust against Toronto. I'm going to keep saying that they didn't, even though I know there are a lot of people that disagree and think that they did. I didn't really see the adjustment. I like London here. I think they should be better. Maybe maybe it is a 3-1, 3-2 maybe even. Because Justice, sometimes they just come to play. This one could be a 3-2. Justice always have little little points where they just come to play and they, they take good teams to five maps. It's just a matter of when. It's got to be one of these games, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? Maybe it's a loser's game. Maybe it is a loser's game. But they, they take the distance in London and go home early. It's hard, because I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to get in the minds of the Washington Justice, and that's never a good idea. It's never a good idea to try and figure out what the hell the Washington Justice are doing, because they have no clue themselves. If I'm giving them a good series against either London or Dallas, who is it going to be? Is it going to be Dallas? 3-2, a classic Washington Justice five-map banger? Against, uh, against one of the top teams? Or is it a Washington Justice win over a mid-table team and look good again for a moment? I, I'm i going to go that, maybe. No, I can't. No, 3-0. I'm going to give them the win over London. I'm, I'm banking on the 50-50 chance Washington to show up, and their 50 is down here. That's what it looks like to me. Sure, why not? Like, Give me a reason why, why Justice can't show up right there. That's just a thing they do. Who Who knows what the hell they're doing? I certainly don't. No, neither do you. Don't act like you know what the hell the Washington Justice are up to. Sure. Not, this is not faith. This is this is rolling the dice on Justice against London. That's it. And it came up triple sevens. So, now that I'm over with that fucking paradox of a team, we have the Vancouver Titans against the Florida Mayhem. I think Florida, I think the double flex four will be good against Vancouver, especially because they don't have that Genji to really step up. But I think Vancouver should be better. I think Florida will be able to win their double flex support map. I'm not sure if they get two. Mm, depends on how good they feel about their Junker Town. I think that, I think they can get two against Justice against Titans. That that doesn't seem unreasonable. I still don't believe in the in the comp against like a really competent Genji, but you're playing against King. I think it's very reasonable to take multiple maps against King on the double flex support if Sermon can play. I'm gonna base this around him being able to, at least from a from a distance, at least. Yeah, three three two looks good. Uh, I just think that that you know King won't be able to match up to the flex support. Other than that, Vancouver just should be a better team with their disengages in the mirror. With mirror, they just should be better. Especially if Sermajet is at land, he won't have that energy, and that is a big that is a big factor in esports, and we can't pretend it isn't. Okay, so now one of these teams get third at least. Uh, Dallas or Shock, again, I can't say Dallas. Can the Zells really lose the Shock? Now, do Shock take what they learned against Dallas in that prior matchup, and do they come back and they figure out how to beat them? I don't I don't think so. I actually don't think so. It just depends on can Kilo actually compete with Edison, because before, Sparkle got the upper hand on Proper, but it wasn't because of his raw mechanic. I don't think Proper showed that he's worse than Sparkle. That's not what I got from that match. I got that Dallas were setting up Sparkle much better, and I'm not sure if that changes after a week. I don't think it does. Now, is it a 3-1 or a 3-0? I could see it being a 3-0, but I'm going to give it a 3-2. I think Shock will have learned at least a bit and be able to set proper up a little bit better, but I think Dallas is still a better team overall, and they'll be able to take out Shock um, decently easily. Maybe I said decently easily. I, I don't know, 3-1. I don't think it's, I don't think it goes to this. Oh, that's annoying. I, I don't think it goes to this. I, would I take it all back. I think they'll learn a little bit, but not enough to actually win more maps. Okay, so Justice Outlaws. Um, Justice have lost their their spark right there. It's gone. They they get their one win against London, and they, they get the, they're good for one. They're good for one close match. 
Uh, they they lose it now. It's gone. Merritt and Pelican step up. This gives Houston some confidence that they can actually do things deep into a tournament run, or or does it not? Or does it not? And Washington are able to actually do things. Is this where Pelican crumbles? Is it right here? I think it is. I think it's right here. Pelican's crumbled. He's not here anymore. He once again has crumbled. And the Washington Justice have prevailed. What are our thoughts on that? I I think it's a little a little not great. So I still believe in Houston. But I also believe in Houston's ability to fail and not place top four in a tournament. I believe in that as well. So you know what I'm I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give the justice a go. Actually, I'm gonna give Justice a 3-1. Not even a 3-2. They did worse against London. The K has come alive. Do not threaten team. This is this is this is the universe that we're living in. But the Washington Justice plays fourth in the summer showdown. Or or higher. Or higher. We can still go higher. You can always go higher. Okay. Now the fight against Vancouver. This is the all Canadian matchup that features one Canadian who will be on the bench. I am thinking, what am I thinking? A one, I'm thinking a through two from Defiant right now. I think through two looks pretty reasonable because realistically Vancouver should be able to win the Sojourn map still. I'm still going to go with that narrative that Toronto are not going to win the Sojourn maps against really good Sojourns. And it's not because he's just not good enough at it. It's just because the team as a whole isn't good enough at playing around it. And I think the Genji map, this is one of the Genji maps where I actually give the edge to define one of like the only ones. So, sure. Why, can't, why couldn't it be a 3-2? Maybe it's a 3-1, actually. The more I think about it, it's like, I think they're good enough to actually beat Vancouver in, on the Sojourn. So I'll give them a 3-1. I think the Vancouver will take one of the Sojourn maps if they do counterpick. This is also assuming that every team counterpicks Toronto to a Sojourn map, which there are only a few of. So Next up, we got Washington Defiant. It's not happening here. It's not happening here, boys. I'm sorry. Defiant. Uh, I have the home crowd buff. I don't care that Washington's that good. This is like, like, you know what? Washington against Defiant? Sure. Um, can Are Washington smart enough to even do it? I don't even know. I think I'd give them, like, one. I think I'd give them one. It depends. I want to say they show up or if they're done showing up after, after the Houston crumble. They have the confidence. The K with confidence is scary. Tyler's aggression, their aggression should get stomped pretty hard by, by the Ash. I could see, I could see a 3-1. I'm seeing a 3-1 right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Washington's even smart enough to pick the Sojourn map. I'm just going to say they're just going to go with whatever the hell they're thinking, and it's not going to work out. Now we get Toronto against Shock. This is where I'm feeling a 3-2. This is where the real... The brain comes in about the the Ash versus Sojourn once again. I'm putting all my money on that. And I'm seeing a Defiant defiant come through. Defiant victory, even. Yeah. And if Proper is able to diff all the hard enough, sure. That's reasonable. I think the back lines are pretty even. I think the the core of these teams are pretty even. It's going to come down to can Shock deal with the Ash. I'm not sure if they will. I'm not positive. They struggle against Dallas. I think Toronto have just as strong of an Ash, potentially stronger at times, depending on how they're feeling. Because Hisu is better than Edison, so it does make sense that the Ash is a bit stronger than Defiant, a little bit. Even though Sparkle is quite better than all of them. I like a 3-2. And Shock go home with a third. Uh, this A disappointing third for the Shock. And now, the final match we have in Toronto. Dallas versus Toronto. Live. Here. I'm not, I've, I've tried to work out how I'm going to do this between this five-map series. And I've come to the conclusion, right? I think I've determined that, first up, Defiant either win or lose the control. But they win the hybrid, right? They win the hybrid. And then... I, I'm looking for my what I'm looking for right here. They win the hybrid. Maybe they lose the control, win the hybrid, lose the escort, win the push, win the control, win the escort. I think if this goes to seven, the fine are done. They're, it's over. Actually, that's a four one because they win the first control. That's what I've decided. This is a four one. 
if it goes 4-3, I'm going on Dallas. I'm very close to Dallas. I, I genuinely am, but, like, if I'm believing in the crowd, if I'm believing in Defiant, I have to believe in Defiant. So, yeah, this is like, a, oh, wow, the Defiant fans picking Defiant. Of course, that's not going to work. Of course, they're just going to go to Maybe. Maybe. But maybe not. Right? Maybe not. And you know who else was the, was the third team? The, the third pick team going into the kickoff class? It was the, it was the Gladiators. You know what happened to them? They won. Now, is to find the third team now? Maybe Houston, but it's but it's tournament, so Houston get a debuff. That's to remember. Houston do get a debuff in the tournament. So I'm going with this, locking it in as a uh, as a 4-1 victory for Defiant and a 4-0 victory for the Dragons. So let me know why I'm wrong. Let me know why it's just going to be the Dallas Shield winning. It's going to be a boring tournament because, you know, the favorites are going to win both sides. You know, Dallas-Shanghai, the, the, the eternal two teams from last season. Uh, sure. I see it. I see this. You got to dream. You got to dream a little bit. Um, Washington. Also get a little Washington in there for the, the five Washington Justice fans. Six if you count the other guy that they signed. Uh, if you count Mike from business. Um, okay. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you like and subscribe for more daily Overwatch League content. Have yourself a good one. And uh, deuces.